Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Wrath of the Righteous with me, Bring It Down. We're going to see what's going on at the Hell Knight's outpost with Regil. Now, the Mandevians built this fortress in the rock during the First Crusade and were forced to abandon it after the turning point of the war. It fell into disrepair but remained untouched until the Hell Knights discovered it and set up their base inside. Its stone walls may be hard, but not as hard as the indomitable will of its protectors. this war search for the beauty with your heart not your eyes. All right, well bismuth isn't looking too hot let's go ahead and heal him up a bit the world has suffered enough i know what to do i will help where i can all right get our buffs out something can mess up the whole Italian? The Hell Knights? I don't know how many Hell Knights are here. Either way, it's best to be prepared, just in case. I will lend you my aid. Let me help. Shellen guides on the gold. The world has suffered enough. All right, we're almost there. Some more companions worth of buffs, and then we can finally head out. <laughs> We can cross down here, or we can cross the bridge. Uh, let's go this way first. Yet another obstacle. I'll remove this obstacle. All right, good job, Nenio. Can't hide from me. Take me a little bit of time. So, what did we just pick up? Grand Owl of Wisdom. Uh, for one, that's a cat. Oh, okay. Uh, this figurine of a cat... Well, let me do this. This figurine of a cat is engraved with a name that doesn't fit its appearance. Oh, well, I noticed that. And once activated, it grants the user a permanent plus one bonus to all skill checks, and then vanishes. Like a permanent plus one to all skill checks? I think that'd best be used on Arushale. She's kind of our skill jockey for this playthrough. I know the way. If that's the case. Original scans the top of the hill. Wisp of smoke rise into the air, giving away the location of the Hell Knight outpost. We must hurry. We remain very, very alert. Tell me about your outpost. The outpost is situated on top of a hill. The main building has stout walls and small windows. It serves as a resting area for various Hell Knight orders. Apart from my own troops, there are currently three chapters quartered here, as well as the permanent garrison. We've stocked up on food and water. The gargoyles have taught us a valuable lesson. Now we're prepared for an aerial attack. 
Uh, what could have happened to the missing squad? Reginald gazes into the distance thoughtfully. They were last seen in this very place. We must comb the area. Alright, I'm ready. Let's hurry. So I'm no not mistakes. Up. There we go. Follow my lead. Ready no for anything. To pause. Meditate on your mistakes. Now, the Hell Knights have thoroughly restored and reinforced these fortifications, which date back to the age of the First Crusades. As it should be. It's only been like a hundred years. Be gone, fiend! Now, Let's try this way. You brought the wrong mind. Suspicious Traveler. A pale youngster practically prostrates himself before you. Finally, someone's here. And it's the Crusaders, too. Please help me. I'm all alone, and I don't know what to do. This lad's appearance perfectly matches the description of one of the cultists who were supposed to arrive with the, last e with the lost escort. Rachel notes dispassionately, gripping the handle of his weapon. A c cultist Me? No, no. I'm just an apprentice craftsman. They made its work against our will here. Or there. It seems to me like the cultist is either lying or keeping something from us. Or even worse. Lad recoils and then, surprisingly, definitely jumps away from you. Our victory is certain. Fowler of Virtues. We know just what to do with the Fowler of Virtues. Nenio is on a roll right now. <laughs> uh, Reginald nods to himself. One less demon. Splendid. Uh, perhaps all the captured cultists were possessed by demons, and they assaulted the knights when they thought the moment was right. A reasonable assumption. Let's see what else we're able to find out. I must commend your shrewdness. We would have had it rough had you you hadn't unmasked the demon. I must verify the claim that the knights returned to the outpost. Move out. The gates are wide open. There are no signs of weapon damage, claw marks, or any traces of magic. That is not far. <laughs> I'll go ahead. The Hanai outpost is shrouded in silence. The three chapters seem to have simply vanished, leaving only the pillars, pillars of smoke from their fires to testify to the recent presence of the living. That doesn't seem to unnerve Reggio in the slightest. He, dispa he dispassionately scans the empty camp, as if waiting for something. <laughs> Breaking the prevailing silence, a sudden musical laugh sounds harsh and almost sinister. Karanda. Night Commander, at last. I've been dying to meet you. Come on, come on. Don't be so sullen. Come on over and have a little rest after your journey. You can always stab me or hit me with a spell a bit later. If you like doing that at all, of course. Ivor looks around timidly. It's so scary here. We grab these tasty treats and find a place that isn't as scary. What an arrogant, talkative demon we've got here. I can see you've made yourself quite at home. In our camp. What have we here? One of those black armored blockheads. Why don't you join me and the commander for a little meal? Surely the mighty Hell Knight isn't scared of a little temptation. The demon bats her eyelashes innocently. Regil suddenly frowns. Surprisingly, he then steps forward without hesitation, is next to the demon. Let's talk. Regil, don't you think we should refuse this demon's requests? Then I permits himself an odd smirk. Sometimes it's useful to know your enemy. Why is the camp deserted, demon? Karanda. My name is Karanda. As for the camp's, camp's inhabitants, well, that's a long story. Please sit, Commander. We have a lot to discuss. Accept the invitation. All right, let's talk. 
But the demon claps her hands joyfully. Don Quixote, you have no idea how eager I was to meet you, and how quickly I got here when I discovered you were coming. Do you feel at ease talking to me in this shape? Because I can always slip into something more comfortable. With the snap of her fingers, Grana becomes a golden-haired, bright-eyed young man, dressed in the white of a Seren Serenrayan cleric. Is that how you say that? I can look like this. So likable, so trustworthy. Or if you prefer, this is my favorite form. It has driven so many crusaders out of their minds. The demon's playful little... The demon's playful pose oddly clashes with the strict, upright appearance of Queen Galfrey. Very charming. Now stop this farce, demon. Oh, Sir Knight, do tell me, aren't you bored with yourself? Every soul must feel something to get their blood pumping. Some are driven by avarice, others by lust, and others still by envy. If you think you've managed to shield yourself from every vice and every flaw, well, that just means that you're blind, and your vice is the greatest of them all, pride. You said you knew I was coming. How? The demon looks astonished for a moment. How did I know? Ah, we all have our sources. Perhaps I'll tell you about them, Commander. We can establish a certain friendship. Are you here to preach at us, or do you actually have something meaningful to say? The demon's expression grows serious. I apologize for the frivolity, Knight Commander. It's so hard to restrain myself. I blame those Hell Knights. Ugh. No denizen of the Abyss could torture them as thoroughly as they punish themselves. But now on to business. I have a rather unusual request. I'd like to become a crusader. But before a thousand and one objections escape your mouth, think about this. Your fame precedes you by quite some distance. They speak of you even down in the Abyss. We have never encountered anyone possessing such power. That is so exciting. The demon exhales loudly. I even heard that a part of your power trickles down to your most loyal companions. Why would a clever lady like me keep on serving demon lords, when instead there is someone so unusual and intriguing? I can't promise you I'm going to kneel before that Iomide of yours right away, but I have many, many interesting stories to tell you, or to tell about my friends from the Abyss. Of course, I can also be of personal use to you. Any shape you desire, remember? I'm not even sure which of your suggestions is more revolting, demon. Your effortless betrayal of your kin, for your filthy insinuations. Grana's tail suddenly springs up, as Tip gently caresses Rezel's cheek. Oh, do smile a little, Hell Knight. This isn't Hell yet. Yeah, only someone utterly mad would trust a demon. You go tiresome, demon. Make your move. Let's get this over with. I've told you what I want. Say yes, Don Quixote. In return, you'll get priceless knowledge about demonic and cultist activities, my small collection of trophies, and... me. Say no. You'll get nothing but the incessant whining of your Hell Knight flunky. I'm not interested in your personal use. But I could do with some information about your fellow demons. Uh, tell me everything you know, and you may consider yourself enlisted. Fine. I'm not used to giving up so easily. The demon chuckles. Want me to convince you? Here's a little tease. You asked me about the Hell Knights from the camp. They've locked themselves up in the outpost's main building, scared out of their wits. Go let them out. I'll join you later and tell you everything I know about the plans of my former allies. That's a serious conversation. We'll have to be... Very thorough. Rachel's expression is difficult to read. It does not seem very happy. Through clenched teeth, he says, Come, you must examine the building. I have no intention of actually enlisting the demon into my army. A few mortals, apart from the Hell Knights, would dare settle next to a hotbed of the Blight. I know the way. The outpost is in perfect condition, 
Everything appears to be in its right place. There are no signs of battle. Follow my lead. Oh. A security checkpoint. Precautionary measure highly characteristic of the Hell Knights. Flanks the entrance. A tall man wearing black armor and a full helm salutes you with his sword. Knight Commander, you've rallied to our defense. We're forced to retreat under the onslaught of the demon Karanda and her lackeys. We held position for as long as we could, but we were sure to perish without outside help. The knight adds in a hushed voice. Many of us are injured. You assist us, please. We hid the wounded in the back of the outpost, so the demons couldn't reach them as easily. Reginald remains silent and calculating as he studies the knights. Oh, so there are three chapters quartered here, and your numbers are sparse. Where are the others? Unfortunately, they retreated prior to the attack. Had we stood at full strength, we wouldn't have let them we wouldn't have let them trap what? We wouldn't have let them to trap us here. Get rid of the two. We wouldn't have let them trap us here. I was just exposed and killed a demon who possessed someone. How do I make sure none of you are afflicted in the same way? You can use defensive spells to make sure. The knight offers without hesitation. Those possessed by demons cannot cross magic circles against evil, for example. Your story has too many inconsistencies. Reginald permits himself a slight smirk. I was hoping you'd see through their ruse, Don Quixote, and I'm not disappointed. I expected more from you, demon. Your cleverness won't save you, mortals. Do not fear! Do not waver! You won't survive me! Alright, let's do a haste. So, well, that was easy. She died immediately. As soon as we locked eyes on her, she <laughs> she got killed. I think Nenio killed her. I have to go back into the combat log and look. Oh, wait. Nicholas Shadow hisses. Let me ransom my life, Crusader. I have loot. Much loot that I picked off the Fallen. I feel like it's worth the price of letting one poor soul slink back to the Abyss. The cultist hostage trembles with fear and fails to utter a word. Her eyes are pleading. Yeah, I don't need your handouts. Demon grabs the throat of a kneeling cultist with his claws. Are you as deaf to Are you as deaf to compassion as you are to avarice? Have mercy on this soul I use as a vessel. If you lay a hand on me, he's dead. You only commit more atrocities if I let you live. Die. The demon's death rattle reverberates off the walls. In his dying agony, he squeezes the kneeling cultist's neck with his claws, practically tearing the man's throat out. But what about the surviving cultists? Should we interrogate them? They won't tell us anything we don't already know. Deal with them as you see fit. If you don't want to waste your time, the orders will take care of them later. We vanquish the demons, but we still don't know where the knights from the camp are. Reginald casts a stern glance in your direction. Take a look around if you think it best. Then we must leave. It's time. Get some loot first if we can.
Ace the Eradicator. This plus 2 dagger allows the wielder to make 2 additional attacks during a full attack action. This effect doesn't stack with the effect of the haste spell. Still pretty good, I think haste only gives you the 1 extra attack. As it should be. My will is resolute. The two extra attacks is better. I'm always open to ideas. I will lend you my aid. I am prepared. Together we stand. All right, don't mess this up. One in three chance. Damn, it's just not my lucky day. This was simple enough. More demon blood and sunstroke. Whenever this plus three radiant cold iron heavy mace lands a hit, the enemy must pass a fortitude saving throw or become sickened for one or four rounds. And it's not crit dependent. That's exciting. I think the Bleaching Practical Guidance by Isa something. Pretty sure we've read this before. I think we found the same thing in Regil's belongings in camp. That is not far. Is that how I imagine serving the Abyss? Not Close ranks. Yeah. Now we're going to kill these guys. Demons used us. They pull our strings like marionettes. Don't kill me, please. Make every okay. <laughs> I'll grab all this stuff on our way out. All right, Bismuth, if you wanted to... Why is he so slow? Oh, he's exhausted. I know what to do. You can take care of that. A bright Let future me awaits us. Paralector Aminos Renth leans on his longsword. At last. How did it go, Paralector Derenge? Exactly as it should have. One details, Renth? Pride your signifers. But after all, your order takes such pride in them. Explain yourself, Regil. Of course. Regil pauses, then deliberately continues in a louder voice, so that Aminos and the other knights can hear him too. Everything that ha ha uh, everything that happened was, in a way, a show. We received reports about the location of several particularly cunning demons. Not the fighting kind, but those who specialize in deceit and temptation. We could have surrounded and destroyed their hideout, but instead, we let them know that the Knight Commander of Dresden would soon arrive in our, our deserted camp. The fiend swallowed it hook, line, and sinker. How could any of them miss an opportunity to prove themselves by killing the new leader of the crusade? Demons love talking about the pride of mortals, but in fact, they suffer from that vice far more than anyone else. Regil's smile is a cruel one. Now for the critical bit. My reasons. Even though the Orders knew a lot about the new commander's behavior, the information lacked veracity and consistency. For instance, it's always useful to know uh, how well your principal ally is able to resist deceit and, de and temptation. And so I suggested that they meet with Karanda and her cohorts. So you're testing me. Yes, I was. Regil doesn't look away. Someone had to, seeing that Her Majesty Godfrey of Mendev is so prone to bestowing titles and armies without a second thought. You know, I thought the same thing. He kind of just gave us command, knowing nothing about us. I thought maybe like more of a champion position would be more befitting of our spot after the Great Garrison, since we didn't really lead anybody in the Great Garrison. We just rescued some people and did a lot of fighting. So putting us in like a like an honor roll versus command would make more sense since we would still be there to inspire our allies. 
but we wouldn't be in charge of them since, again, we hadn't proved our actual command yet. I read Alaris's voice a touch, and yet you can't claim that I was insincere. I made myself crystal clear when I stated my interest in your person and your unusual powers back when we first met. I also mentioned how important you are for the Crusade and our shared cause. We're at the vanguard of what is possibly the most important war of our age. No one can afford the privilege of blind trust with these stakes. There are flaws in the way you approach problems, but nothing that cannot be corrected. A new leader can be forgiven for sh a new leader can be forgiven some shortcomings. Hope you outgrow them quickly. Did it cross your mind that I could die during this test of yours? Reginald seems to be slightly taken aback. Of course it did. Our main force was positioned nearby, and they were ready to advance at the first sign of real trouble. I was not going to deprive the Crusaders of their commander, and so chaos among their already sorely undisciplined ranks. Yeah, I understand your concern, and I don't begrudge, begrudge you this test. Regio bows respectfully. I'm glad we've reached an understanding, and I'm sorry that I had to resort to such measures. Now that we've discussed everything, it's still a small matter to attend to. Regio looks at the ranks of the Hell Knights and raises his voice. Yaker and Kel, two steps forward. I hear and obey, Paralector Derenge. I'm going to speak about your role in recent events. You received my order to visit the Knight Commander in Dresden and feed him misleading information. How should a Hell Knight behave in this situation? Yaker swallows dryly as he tries to feign composure. The Hell Knight must obey his commander's orders. If his commander's orders directly contradict the tenets of the measure in the chain, or go against the order's interests, then the Knight must report his commander to the Higher Order Command. Regil's piercing gaze bores into the young knight. And what did you do? Did you report me? No, sir. With your permission, sir. I deduced that it was some kind of test for the Knight Commander. That didn't seem right to me, but... You don't have my permission to blabber excuses, Knight. You gave him an order, and now you want to punish him for following it. Well, if the commander deems my verdict faulty, we shall postpone this review of your actions. Dismissed. That is all. Thank you for your visit, commander. Okay, well that was interesting. Um, guess it's time to head back and deal with our friends at the uh, Freedom's View. Let me try talking to these guys. Uh, Paralector Aminos Renth greets you with a nod. Knight Commander. If you wish, Marmages will show you a list of goods we offer. It includes both spoils of war and the items produced by Order's craftsmen. How long have you known Paralector Regil Derenge? I've known him from even before the World Wound and the Crusades. Regil is one of those gnomes who'd take forever to succumb to the bleaching. He was different once. He was bright. He was an armager in the Order of the Scourge, then he transferred to the Godclaw, soared through the ranks, and started losing color. I can't be sure which of these three facts is the cause, and which is the effect. I to see what your chapter has for sale. Belt of Improved Protection. This belt grants the wearer a plus 10 confidence bonus on mobility checks. A Plate of Synergy. I can inspect these again. Sweet. Oh, this plus three adamantine half plate grants the wearer additional DR1. Okay. Helmet of Durable Cavalier. This helmet grants its wearer plus one insight bonus to armor class. Vigilant Watch. Not a long spear. Whenever the wielder of this plus three corrosive spear is flat footed and is hit by an enemy for the first time, they make an attack against that enemy. It's cool. Oh, cool, we can buy the uh, Hell Knight equipment here. Uh, Battle Forged. This plus three Warhammer deals one to 12 plus three damage on a hit and has a critical range of 19 to 20.
Well, I guess we can grab this. Yes, that's all we need. I'm tempted to grab this or to keep this. Eh, I'm gonna get rid of it. I see its use, but I eh, we'll be fine without it. All right, the helmet. I guess we can give the Sela. No, she needs that. This is actually a waste of money. Plus one armor class is not worth losing. A boost to your attributes. Well, in hindsight, that was a bad purchase. Wait. No, it's not. We can give this to one of our animal companions. Alright, are the other Follow my lead. pair lictors here, or was it just him? I think it was just him. Might be worth running inside real fast and checking. Then again, maybe not, considering... Bismuth speed. We're gonna be here all day. As it should be. Alright, so let's get out of here. I'm gonna teleport back to Dresden, and we'll probably go sit on top of Freedom's View, and we'll go speak to them in the next one. Uh, was it Ken Five Knives? Should be there, so we can speak to him. I guess this guy's permanently hasted. We will win this war. So I can just unsummon Bismuth. Looks Focus like we just have to wait on, on him goal. to slowly make his way across the map. You are my favorite aid. Let's see. We'll speed things up a bit. Might be a little cruel, but at least now we can finally get back to Dresden. Even though he was almost to the exit, so I guess it wasn't worth it by that point. Alright. We brought Regil here before. I'm sure he's going to enjoy his visit to Freedom's View. Right, I'm going to call the episode here. In the next one, we'll visit our three Crusaders and see what they want. But for now, thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next one.